Greetings from Aaron. My name is Jenny Crockett and I work for the community of Aaron Seabed Trust. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share with you, with a bit of help from some colleagues and some archive footage, coast experiences with marine protected areas here in Scotland. First, a little bit of scene setting. The Isle of Arran is situated within the Firth of Clyde marine region in southwest Scotland. Historically, this was a vital area for fisheries with abundant populations of species such as cod, haddock and herring. In fact, there were so many fish, some historic maps of the areas have here's plenty of cod written across them. Economically, these fisheries were important, employing many people both within the fisheries themselves and in associated businesses. But what was the issue? From the mid-1980s, there was a catastrophic decline in the populations of these fish stocks, and these have still not recovered. The community on Arran were experiencing this decline for themselves, an example being the Landlash Fishing Festival, a significant annual angling festival on the island, which was cancelled in the 1990s due to the lack of fish. But why did this collapse happen? Essentially, it was due to a series of poor fisheries management decisions, which allowed overfishing to occur, opening up Scotland's inshore waters to bottom trawl fisheries, where previously they had been prohibited. Sustained fishing by bottom trawling and scallop dredging resulted in damage to our seabed habitats and loss of the marine life they supported. Two local divers here on Arran, Howard Wood and Don McNeish, witnessed this for themselves and decided something had to be done to protect our marine environment and protect the rich fishing heritage around our island for future generations. The, the initial idea came one day when a friend of mine called Don came back from New Zealand and came to meet me at the, my former business at the garden centre and said, I've seen an amazing thing happen in New Zealand. And I went to meet the, the man who started it, Dr Bill Barantine, and he said, and Don said, I think we should do something like that on, on our own. And, and being pretty naive, as I still am, I said yes. Let's 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 give it a go. So basically, for four or five years, myself and Don pushed away writing letters, speaking to people, um, to try and get things moving. But in that time, we we looked, and Don especially looked at other projects around about the around the world, especially New Zealand, Australia, some of the things that were happening in America and Canada, and we tried to learn from what they'd done, their mistakes and also their successes. So, working with others in the local community, Howard and Don set up the community of Arran Seabed Trust, Coast, in 1995, as a community-led organisation campaigning for better protection of the seas around Arran and in the wider Firth of Clyde. They started by showing people the marine life that was in the water around Arran, talking with anyone and everyone they could and explaining the damage that was occurring due to bottom dredge and trawl fisheries. In 2008, 13 years after Coast was established and after a huge amount of work undertaken primarily by volunteers, they were successful in getting the Lamlash Bay No Take Zone established. The concept? It's simple. Fishing of any kind is prohibited whilst recreational water sport activities are permitted. In fact, they are actively encouraged so people can enjoy the benefits of a healthy and abundant marine environment, which also helps to boost our local economy. The no-take zone is a small area, but it is still the only one of its kind in Scotland. The no-take zone now forms part of the South Arran Marine Protected Area a 280 kilometre square zone that promotes sustainable fishing activity, such as creel fishing, rod and line fishing, and hand diving. 
The South Arran MPA came about as part of the Scottish Government's Marine Protected Areas Programme as a result of Coast and the Arran community campaigning for a larger marine protected area around the southern part of Arran. This process took four years, with the Marine Conservation Order officially introduced in 2016 that prohibits bottom dredging in the whole of the South Arran marine protected area and restricts bottom trawling to three outer areas. Within the Lumlash Bay no-take zone and the South Arran marine protected area, the recovery has been truly remarkable. Our own observations have been backed up by extensive monitoring by the universities of York and Glasgow. There's been really good recovery in the no-take zone, increase in biodiversity of at least 50%, so the scallops have gotten bigger and older and they're more reproductively active. There's about three or four times more lobsters in the no-take zone than there would be out in an area that's fished. The complexity of the seabed plays an important role for fish species, including commercially important species such as Atlantic cod, haddock and whiting. Fish habitat and population studies in both the no-take zone and MPA have shown that juvenile Atlantic cod, in particular, prefer more complex habitats. This work is showing that seabed landscape is likely to be an important factor when considering the relative importance of alternative habitats to support different fish species. We've shown that ecosystems do have an amazing ability to recover if they are properly protected. We've published nine or ten scientific papers on this and that's being read by people all over the world and they're trying to replicate the work that we're doing. Um, so, you know, it, it really, from a small beginning, it's really grown into something much, much larger. As well as the positives contributing to biodiversity recovery, MPAs have wider benefits. Our area is becoming more of a draw for scuba divers and snorkelers and local businesses see the benefits of healthy seas. The protection also ensures that important blue carbon habitats are safeguarded, contributing as best they can to natural climate change mitigation. Summarising the last 25 years is not easy. Coast have achieved an awful lot in a relatively short time. From the no-take zone to MPA, We've also received numerous awards, including Howard being honoured with the prestigious Goldman Environmental Prize in 2015. And, most recently, Coast were recognised as one of the top 20 outstanding examples in 100 plus biodiversity practices around the world at the UN Biological Diversity Conference, COP15. Our journey? It's not been plain sailing. However, these awards, achievements and recognitions are testament to the hard work, perseverance of a local community daring to stand up and speak up for what they believe in. Community action can lead to great things and together we can make change happen. And this is why today we work with others locally, nationally and internationally to ensure marine conservation messages are heard. Coast's efforts here on Arran have contributed, in partnership with Fauna and Flora International, to the establishment of the Coastal Communities Network in Scotland, which provides coordinated support to other coastal groups who want to get involved in some way in looking after their own areas of seas and coasts. The network provides a strong communication and support platform that helps develop the community voice within marine management whilst building community action for marine conservation in Scotland. Coast works closely with the RC's coalition, which was formed back in 2018, really as a response to repeated illegal events within marine protected areas and other areas close to fishing in Scotland's waters. Members have a collective desire for a change in the way that our inshore fisheries are managed. Together, we are calling for an urgent reinstatement of an inshore limit, protecting our precious inshore habitats whilst promoting low impact sustainable fishing. Today, all of Coast's work, the community and collaborative action, research, and of course our outreach and education is now delivered from a central hub the Coast Discovery Centre. 
We know that education and outreach are vital to inspire people to protect what they cannot see. The Discovery Centre provides a space where people can come to find out about the coast story, learn how to become active marine conservationists and also engage with creatures from Aaron's waters with our marine life tanks. Coast offices are located within the centre, however we rely on a strong team of volunteers to help us run it. Each summer we take on volunteer marine programme assistance, increasing our capacity to enable all our external outreach such as rock pulling, snorkelling, beach cleaning to continue, whilst offering the opportunity to marine conservationists at the beginning of their careers to expand their knowledge and gain vital experience. Coast's journey is one of perseverance, tenacity and an underlying belief that communities can make real change happen. As we look to the future, we're heartened by the Scottish Government's pledge to bring in a suite of highly protected marine areas around our coastlines. This said, HPMAs should be seen as a specific type of spatial measure nested within a framework of broader spatial management. We believe broader spatial management is required first, namely an inshore limit to remove substantial seabed impacts. This would provide a framework for ecosystem recovery and a just transition to less impactful fisheries. What this would also do is provide a framework for buffer areas around HPMAs. HPMAs in isolation, without any buffer zones, simply don't make sense. We know from here on Arran that it is most effective to have a scaled zoning system of spatial management with varying levels of activity underpinned by an ecosystems based approach to fisheries management. Most importantly, local communities from tourism operators to business owners to fishermen must be included in discussions from the start in order to strengthen trust and build support. Our community are proud at having been at the forefront of marine conservation for the past decade. We made a small but significant start and we've proved the concept. We've shown you can bring a seabed back to life and it thrives. All that's needed is that we follow the science, educate the public and find the political will. We've proved it's doable. Here's to a bright future for our seas and all the people who depend on them.